Okay, uh, now that our leather's dry, and ideally, you leave this overnight. It just depends on the temperature and the humidity, how long it's going to take it to dry and how wet the leather was to begin with. But you can put it under a fan or use a hair dryer and speed things along a little bit. Uh, and uh, we're ready now here. But uh, we aren't going to hand stitch this holster, but I'm going to show you that you, I'm going to show you how you could. I would use a, to start with, I would use an overstitch wheel like this. And we've already got a stitch groove that we put in there before we ever glued things together. But I would just get right in that groove at the very bottom or the top, it just doesn't matter which end you start at, and roll this wheel along. And all this will do right now is mark where you would punch your stitch holes. Now for this, I wouldn't use a stitching chisel, but it, you're too thick to, to make that go satisfactorily. But you can use a, a sharp awl and you can punch through those holes. It looks like it's impossible, but if you're all sharp, uh, it'll go well. But anyway, like I said, we aren't gonna do that here. Uh, we're going to uh, go over to the shop and use a Cobra Class 4 to do this with it. Uh, We'll make things go a little faster and smoother. Okay, we're over here at the machine. Uh, we're gonna use a class four Cobra here. Uh, you can use a class three. They're the same machine other than the throat length. Uh, you can use any heavy stitcher actually, but uh, I'm using a, a size 207 thread on the bottom, on the bobbin side. And I'm using a 277 on the top with a size 24 needle. Uh, that's all something that you're just gonna have to work out for yourself if you've got a machine or if you're gonna get one. But uh, I'm pretty well set up here, but I'm gonna run it through a practice piece just to make sure. And I've got uh, three pieces of leather here. They're cut off from uh, the actual pattern that we cut. So I'm gonna be stitching through exactly the same amount of material that uh, the holster is. But I'm just gonna check and make sure everything's going right. Everything looks good on the top. Looks like I'm pulling the the lock to the about the middle. So I think we're set up all right. And this is about the right stitch length that I like. That's a matter of preference. Some people use like a real long stitch. I like a fairly close stitch. So anyway, let's get started here. With our holster, I'm gonna start at the very bottom. Yeah, dude, I'm going to make one or two stitches and then I'm going to back stitch those just to lock the stitches in. Okay, when I start forward and go over this, now there'll actually be three stitches in those two holes that I just did. I'm just gonna take it easy and make sure, I'm not using a, a guide here, I'm doing this freehand because I haven't trimmed this edge yet. A lot of people like to trim their edge first and then use a guide. I don't because I feel like a lot of times when I stitch it might actually move the leather a little bit and all the time I 
used trying to get everything even to begin with is wasted. So I'm going to stitch it and then I'll go back and, uh, and trim everything up. Okay, I'm going to back stitch about three times here now. Okay, let's see what we ended up with. Everything looks good on top. Looks good. Okay, let's go over to the bench and I'll start trimming stuff up a little bit. I left a little tag in on each of these and rather than tie a knot in this, this uh, synthetic thread, you get a better end if you burn those ends, it's more permanent than a knot would be. But anyway, okay, now let's go over here and I'll get my round knife. set this on the bench and what I'm doing is I'm going to cut this as even as I can along here but then I'm going to go to the sander and I'll sand it off smooth okay I got pretty close there but it's not perfect okay at home, you, if you don't have a sander, you can do this by hand. Uh, machine sure makes it easier, but I didn't have a machine myself for a long time and I did it by hand. Some people use a piece of glass to scrape this edge, but sandpaper works better. Okay, I think I got that pretty smooth. Now we'll go over to the bench again and I'll use a, a edge beveler, knock these square corners off and, and edge the rest of this and we'll be off to the next step. Okay, now for this big edge, I'm gonna use a number four edge beveler. It'll take off a big edge, but since it's so thick, I wanna round it off quite a bit so it doesn't just look clumsy there. And that's what this big edge will, will do. It will help that look quite a bit. Now, if you look at that edge, it made it look like it was actually thinner than it is just because we've rounded that edge over. But now I'm going to switch. I'm going to use a number two edger to edge the rest of this around here. The 
the size edger that you use depends entirely on how thick the piece of leather that you're beveling is. This was real thick, and this is not so much. I think we're edged about everywhere. Let me clean this up just a little bit. <coughs> Let me get that. Knock some of this corner off right there. Uh, that looks pretty good to me. Now I'm gonna get to some water and that saddle soap and canvas again getting it pretty wet. I always like to dry my hands off because this saddle soap is so slick when it's wet you can't hardly hold on to it. Everything's gone according to plan. This should make a pretty perfect edge. A lot of people will take a real fine grit sandpaper and they'll edge it a little bit and rub it a little bit and sand it a little bit. But if you've done a good job to begin with, you can make a pretty decent edge just by this step right here. Uh, you can see there how it's three pieces of leather, but uh, you can't feel three pieces. All you can feel is one. Now, we've already rubbed this edge and this bottom edge before we ever started. So all I've got left to do is, uh, this is called the skirt of the holster. So I'm going to edge the skirt of the holster a little bit, rub it. I think I mentioned this before, but the friction here is the, what's really doing the work. Piece of canvas is about perfect to do this with. I've heard people using a piece of uh, brown wrapping paper to do this with, and I've tried it before and it works, but you sure can't beat this canvas. Okay. Now, suspense. I'm going to see if this holster works. This is the gun we patterned it after. <laughs> Pretty nice fit. I just didn't know it was a big person. Okay. I had to burn. 
if you if you were wanting to make a fast draw holster, you would make this. You'd have probably made this holster a little bit bigger. And while I'm at it, most fast draw holsters are two ply. They're lined, and on the inside, they'll uh, right around this holster, the part that goes around the the barrel and the cylinder. They'll either put a piece of rawhide in the center or a piece of sheet metal I've heard people use to make it really hard. That way the gun will slide in and out a lot easier. But uh, for what we're doing here, just a carry type holster, this works pretty good. I think that looks good. I'm happy with it anyway. So now the next step, let me, there's one piece I didn't get burned yet. Okay, now this next step is this retainer strap. I made this plenty long. I'm going to cut a little bit of it off to start with here. There's lots of different ways you can do this. But I want it about there, about where this curve starts to straighten out. I think that looks about the best. So what I'm gonna do, I've got it fit up there tight. I'm gonna mark this. I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna give myself just a little room because I'm going to cut two slots in this skirt, and this leather has to go through it, so I'm cutting it a hair long. What I've done here is just Mark corresponding mark on the skirt from the top of the holster. That's where I'm going to cut my slots. I'll have to go over here and get myself a oblong cut. I made this slot. <clears throat> I want it to be tight in here. That's why I'm having kind of a hard time doing this. If you make it loose, it'll only get looser. So I like it to be very snug when I first put it through. Okay. just about right okay now then there are, there are lots of ways to do this but I like to just stitch mine together in the back lace them together and I'm just eyeballing three holes on each side all I'm going to punch those three holes with
Yeah, I'm gonna take and just lace them together. See if I can find this hole. Kind of a surgeon's knot in here. Now, we're going to have a, a tie down string on it, and we've still got to put a uh, retainer <clears throat> loop on it for the, for the hammer. But first, I'm going to do the tie down string. Put this. There's no set rule, and th rule of thumb as to how close this, the end of this holster needs to be to the skirt but I just do something that looks good to my eye. Now this uh, tie down thong, I just cut a piece of lace about six feet long. You know, if you're doing it for yourself or for someone who has real big heavy legs, you might want it a little longer. Some people might want it a little bit shorter. But six feet is a pretty good place to start. There again, I made these holes so this lace goes in there real snug. There, that looks pretty good to me. Now then, for the hammer retainer, I'll just punch one hole in here, and I'm going to punch another one. So it'll be two holes. little 
trainer retainer strap already cut. So what I'm gonna do come from the back side here. Come in. I'm gonna go back through that hole. Sometimes this can be kind of a wrestling match. Okay. Now let me get the gun and put that in there. Yeah. That's pretty good right where it is. I'm not going to adjust that up any further. Then you just tuck the end of that back in here like this. And our holster is finished, folks. Uh, I haven't oiled it yet, but I would put a light coat of Nate's foot oil on it. You can put a sealer on it if you want to. Uh, I guess we're done for right now. Let's go shoot this thing. <laughs>